The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Pleasant good evening, everyone. It is Thursday, June 8th, 2023. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Otis Wiley and J.U. Choo Choo Culcric. This is Sparta MSU. Welcome to the show. If it's your first time, definitely go to that live chat because that's where the party is at. And don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. And go to the link in our bio in order to know how to subscribe to all of our social media platforms. That's Twitter, Facebook, you name it, Instagram and all. Guys, how do you do? How say how do you? you? <laughs> how do you do? How how say you? It's like, how are you doing, Wendy? Okay. Um, how, doing you, good, man. how you doing? <laughs> doing I'm good. good. I actually just... Like 10 minutes ago, just pulled in a driveway from the airport from Cali. So this was a turn and burn, you know, kind of thing there. I know you were a little worried, Stray. You called me early, early. Was like, hey, you going to make it? Hey, how, how fast were you driving? Man? You put uh, that down. I was, I was good. But the uh, good thing is I didn't realize. I thought my flight was at 10 at 1230. And I was like, oh, you know, I was just like, I'll just go a little early. See if I can, you know, talk my way into, you know, better seats. Good thing I did because that thing was like eleven thirty. <laughs> <laughs> that call would have been like I was uh, doing yeah, the math. Like, <laughs> the math ain't math. math. The math ain't math. Could you could you like, imagine? Could you imagine a like, teacher running in the airport? Like <laughs> I will never run. Mm -mm. Like, oh, you would never run? I will never run. You I won't run. People, I see those people running because they're gonna miss it. From, I won't do it. I'll I'll take the L. You I'm not gonna be running and sweating to that. Mm -mm. <laughs> Why? 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 Don't I thought you was an athlete. I am an athlete, so I'm gonna take my time. You, you, I'm, just, I'm gonna go like running kids over and all that stuff to catch a flight. Nah, there's a the big man upstairs has a plan. If if I miss that flight, I missed the flight for a reason. I don't risk things like that. <laughs> I wonder when you with your family, like he was like, would you like nah, we good, we gonna walk. <laughs> <laughs> only yeah, two two only runs on the football field, Johnny. Exactly. Man, five bro, yards in that, that five yards in old commercials with OJ. You, you oh, guys know. Hurts, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Running through the airport, the the original OJ, and then you know, not the one we know now. And guys, like you know, look, you you got like you were in California this morning. I'm in Georgia right now. Uh, Otis, it's it's this is crazy. I mean, you just had a normal day of just doing. All those busy, those crazy meetings you got to deal with every day, huh? Oh yeah, you said normal day, man. Look, I don't, I don't, even, I don't consider it normal, uh, but it's normal know, now. Yeah, it's, it's, new, normal it's, now. it's the new normal. It's the new normal. It's it's like, the new normal. Yeah, you know, it's it's it, it's it was good, you know, to be you know feet and ground, knowing that I'm in my city and I'm not traveling. Travel is done. Like I'm not traveling until um, probably end of July, but that's more so for a vacation. But I'm not going anywhere unless they. Tell me I need to go. <laughs> so uh, 10, feet, 10 toes down right here in, in Hasley, East Lansing, Michigan, man. But today was a beautiful day. But uh, for others that are dealing with that smoke and that fires, man, in New York, man, like, you know, we, we saw a couple of our play fly people that we had our all like a GM call today. But people are really affected by it, man. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just thank God for this day. Clear, clear uh, sunshine and rain and, you know, no rain, but it's just good. We good. Right. Thursday, Thursday. Can't hurt, you know, Thursday. Today's Thursday. We got a very special guest. You, Tuesday, you know, we have a, a, a live show coming up. So that's something that we're all going to get the band together and do a show live from East Lansing at a 
undisclosed location. We'll talk about that a little later in the show. But guys, like instead of going through the normal rundown of what's been going on in, in Spartan uh, athletics, we're just going to bring on our guests, man. And, and, you know, this guy, and, uh, you know, if Tony can, can play a little clip of our special guest, because, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited about this. Tony, if you have the video. You are looking live here in New York City as the 1989 NFL draft is about to begin. Momentarily, the Green Bay Packers will make it official. Green Bay Packers select. Look at man number five. He is so impressive. The most dominant offensive lineman that I've ever been around. He's a monster. Something I had never seen before. I'm the best college ass offer. <laughs> they drafted me, I would play for him. You were trying, it seemed, your hardest to be unlikable. It was coming naturally. <laughs> it was a train wreck, just building up speed. Steroids will be attached to my name for the rest of my life, as will the word bust. An original Spartan dog, Tony Mandarich, joins this is Sparta MSU. Welcome to the show, Tony. Thank you, thank you. Did you guys see the wide feet chopping on that block? <laughs> yeah. yeah. On that sled? Did you see that? That was technique right there. Man. Oh, man. That was technique. That's a good duck walk, man. Right? That's a very good duck. Coach Stout will be proud. Short and choppy. Short and chop. No oh. crossover. <laughs> Reggie White confirmed don't cross over. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Tony, definitely. One of the most dominating offensive line. You heard Nick Saban say it right there. Now, you know, when you when you look at those videos of yourself back then, like what what come to mind for you when you're when you're looking at yourself um, and the NFL and those clips of you just breaking Wolverines backs all over the field in Spartan State. Right. That was the the best memory. <laughs> was the break in their backs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a it's a different it's a it was a different time, right? It was, and I'm speaking for myself personally. You know, now I'm almost you know in September I'll be 57, and I'm looking at these videos where you know you're in your 20s, you're 21, and my whole life was consumed with Michigan State with football and school. And, um, and, and my goal when I entered Michigan State was obviously to get an education and to become the best college football player in the country before I left college. Um, so I felt that, you know, if, if I'm going to talk that talk, I better walk that walk with, with worth, work ethic, with preparation, with whatever, you know, weightlifting, film, um, track work. Uh, everything and anything to, to become the best because, you know, if you're going to talk that talk, you can't train like everybody else and you can't do what everybody else is doing, in my opinion. And that goes across the board in sports and business too. Mm. Yeah, Tony, you, uh, you know, you had the, the pleasure, I say privilege, but I don't know if it was privilege at the time to uh, be coached <laughs> by <laughs> the great Nick Saban. And, uh, you know, what you see back then and obviously what you see him doing now, uh, down there in Alabama, you know, do you still keep in touch with them? But you, or also talk about just being coached by Nick Saban during uh, his tenure with Michigan State. Well, you know, Nick, um, we we we're in touch, but not like it's not often. Um, and Nick was really the guy who recruited me. He was like the, he had the Ohio area because my senior year of high school, I was in Ohio, so he recruited me out of Ohio and. You guys all know whoever, whichever coach recruited recruited you, you're kind of under their wing. They kind of keep an eye on you, stuff like that. But really, Buck Nystrom was the offensive line coach, so Nick was a, a defensive back coach. And you know, we'd be on the offensive field during practice, and and Buck Nystrom, if you know anything about him, I mean, he's an iconic legend, offensive line coach, um, one of the only people I think in the NCAA that was a two time. All-American football player and a two-time academic All-American and had won a national championship in the 50s. So he was our coach and, and he coached with a lot of yelling and screaming and passion. And, and <laughs> he was, you know, so, I mean, we had that firsthand, but 
we would stop in the middle of drill and we'd like look across to the other side of the defensive field and we'd be like, what is going on over there? And it'd be Nick just chewing some DB out. And I thought to myself, man, I am glad I'm not a defensive back because that like they get, they get an ass chewing but <laughs> like, about every 20 minutes, you know, it doesn't matter if you're an individual or, or team drill or scaly or whatever. <laughs> but um, but but you know it was awesome to your, to your point on your question Otis is to watch the evolution of Nick Saban and to think like to think he went from a DB coach to now six seven national championships and you know was a head coach at state and I think Toledo and was that was the defensive coordinator and with the Browns that's when he left Michigan State the first time he, he went to Cleveland um, but you know what everything he talks about today is the same fundamental stuff he taught in the, when I was there. And it was yeah. simplicity, fundamentals, details, showing up. You know, if it's, a, if it's an 8 o'clock meeting, you're there at 745. That's what they really mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you guys all know. So so it was, it, it's, it, it was just, it's a, it was an interesting, and I feel very blessed to have watched his life. Like and to and to still be watching, I I hope he gets the double digits, and, and you know there's a lot of I mean uh, a lot of you know Nick haters because he left state and stuff, and it's like you know what it's a business, it's a big <laughs> like, I want to get over it. It's a business, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So so t Tony, um, you know, so let's go back. You know, everyone knows uh, you know some of your story and everything like that. Um, first of all, you know. Fellow, fellow Canadian. So yes, we sir. Yes, sir. Out there, you know, the <laughs> he always gives. He always gives it. me. He always gives me crap about Texas and this and all that. But he goes back and forth: <laughs> Canadian, <laughs> New York, Africa. <laughs> you know, but, I love it. it. It's tough for us in Canada playing football. So yes. you know, the the rules are different. The field's yes. bigger. The goalpost is up us. front. Yes. Football isn't as huge. It's not as very big in Canada. I remember the first time. You know, my wife and I were dating, and I went to her visit her family and stuff. And I was like, "Take me to your high school. Let me see your football field." Right. And it's this. There was literally like two bleachers, yeah. like two, yeah. Yeah. two rows, and yeah. the grass was to your knee. They didn't take care because they're hockey and soccer. Yeah, hockey. You yeah. You're right. You're right. So how did well, you, you get, get basketball? Because into... Canadians put on basketball yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so track how did and field. you get into? How did you get into? Uh, football and how, how was that journey well it, when i entered high school in canada white oaks high school in oakville ontario canada where i grew up um my brother was just leaving uh that high school on a half scholarship to kent state university in kent ohio and so he was you know big man i want to say big man on campus but he was big man on campus at white oaks high school so when i came in i came in green as a leaf i mean i had never played tackle football and uh, so there was big shoes to fill. And my brother, you know, was my idol. And I looked up to him and throughout his whole life, you know, he passed away in 93 from cancer. But he was to this day, he's my hero. And, and, and one of the people that went out of his way, like did extraordinary things. So many I can't go into about helping me and not just me, but I'm giving you my personal experience, helping me to try to achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. Um, and for, for him and I, the dream was the NFL and he ended up getting drafted in the first round in the CFL Canadian league and ended up playing up there for, I mean, I want to say 11 years. Mm. And when, and when I was in high school, I mean, we used like a Nerf football. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling the equipment and everything. We didn't even have, we didn't have, we used construction hats for, for helmets. <laughs> So like, <laughs> I'm well, kidding. I mean, you watch watching like were you watching NFL football, college yeah. football? But like, yeah, well, you know, well, well, what were we got things the, you were looking at to like try to well, get? Well, we got the Bills. We got the Buffalo Bills were on all the time because we had the rabbit ear antennas right on the TV, and and Detroit Lions obviously. And then you'd always get you know Ohio State, or you'd get that other school in the state of Michigan. Um, and then every once in a while, I'd get Michigan State, but at the, you know, and you get Notre Dame, obviously. I mean, everybody likes Notre Dame. I don't know why, but they do. But regardless of that fact, um, 
so yeah i mean watching them and then we'd also in the afternoon as far as sundays go we'd get a lot of like philadelphia eagles games mm. and they they ended up becoming like my favorite team growing up you know and and um heck i think even today if somebody challenged me i could probably name the starting lineup offense and defense of that super bowl team that got their butts kicked by the raiders <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what really you know that and then you know just watching call the college football like I was I was like amazed I was like man to play on that kind of a, a platform or like a stadium with eighty thousand fans I mean it's just got to be it was literally like that's a that that's a movie that's almost impossible like the stuff that you do like to do that would be impossible and then when it happened. I mean, we're playing Notre Dame at home, right? And you know, guys know who Mark Bavaro is. Do you remember him? Yeah. The tight end. He played for the Giants. Had a great yeah. I mean, this guy the Giants, Super Bowl champ. Right. Yeah. right. And, and he and he was like all American at Notre Dame. His arms were ginormous. Okay. And he's like six, seven. And I was a freshman at state. You know, I was getting redshirted, but I'm dressed for the game and I'm on a knee. And I'm looking at this guy and I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? That guy's not even a tackle. He's a tight end and he's bigger than I am. <laughs> and I was like, but I was like in awe of like, this is like the Notre Dame that we're playing. This isn't like Notre Dame A&T Chattanooga Tech. This is Notre Dame, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right. It's this, like, is Ru- this is Rudy, yeah. right? Yeah, this is right. right. I don't even, I don't, you know what? I don't even think we knew who Rudy was at that time. <laughs> you know, because Rudy, I think, probably just left when we started playing him. But, <laughs> But, but, you know, like t- Tim Brown, I think one I think one year we won Tim Brown yeah. a Heisman. You know, he ran a, the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. Oh. Then he ran a punt return back for a touchdown. I was like, well, yeah. you know, there goes the Heisman for him. You know, and he did. Hey, that's, that's like, oh. <laughs> Once again, Michigan State on some of the highlights. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> luckily, like, that draft probably didn't have that much – High quality HD highlights to be out here. Well, looking at the highlights you guys just ran, I was like, geez, man, I've become like a spoiled brat of high definition. I'm like, look at all the pixelization in that stuff. I'm like, what was ESPN thinking, right? (laughs) I know. I mean, it gets crazy. Tony, like, so you, 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 really revolutionized like the game. You know, you look at it from a from marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. You were in Canada. You decided, you know, hey, I want to play on that stage. You moved to Ohio, right, yeah, to, yeah. to play in high school. Yeah. And that's when you caught the eye of yeah. Nick Saban. Yeah. yeah. Talk about that, 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 that decision to move from Canada to Ohio to America to get recruited, well, which worked. So my brother was at Kent State in Kent, Ohio. And it was Christmas dinner. Um, and we, we sat and talked to my parents. This is my junior year of high school. So I'm going to finish out my high school in Canada, my junior year. And we talked about with my mom and dad, um, boy, it'd be great if, if, uh, I could go down and live with John, my brother and play at the high school that's in Kent, which was Kent Roosevelt high school, um, just to get some exposure, uh, to the, you know, to scouts because the scouts at that time were not coming up to Canada. I think I think a lot of them do recruit now, especially along the, you know, state line, like Southern Ontario has so many good football players and athletes, period. But um, so the whole goal was to get exposure. And, you know, Coach John Nemec, who was the head coach at Kent Roosevelt, you know, they welcomed me with open arms and they didn't have to. Um, They were gracious. Um, They were awesome. We had to go to like a court so my brother would get uh, guardianship of me. Um, and we had like five, like five-star recruits or, or like top tier recruits at Kent Roosevelt that were getting, that were getting recruited by the, you know, big schools for scholarships. Uh, and it just so happened that Nick is very good friends with John Nemec, who was the coach at Kent Roosevelt. And, you know, coach Nemec had said, Hey, you guys take a look at this guy. And that's when Nick took a look and, and he, you know, he, they probably, you know, maybe they thought I had some ability. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. <laughs> hey, man, talk, talk about your kind of. Yeah, right. Kind of. Like you got you got the body frame. Like, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll put weight on you, right? Um, talk talk about talk about the first interaction with with Nick. Like, 
as soon as you were able to have a conversation with him, like yeah. what's some well, funny stuff that you like people wouldn't know when he starts to man. engage with you. You guys know Nick, right? <laughs> I like, don't. I don't know him fully. I don't know him like you and Trey. Trey, Trey, I played for him. So I played like, four years for him. Yeah. So JC, you know how sometimes you. Uh, I mean, it could be a hard conversation if it's just the two of you in a room. It's right. like Coach. It's like Coach D. Coach D. Oh, yeah. It's like Coach D. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I don't know Coach. Uh, I've met Coach D. Way more. They, have, they have the switch. They have that switch. Right. Switch. right. Yeah. And 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 it's like. So, you know, I'm just kind of like happy-go-lucky, kind of like, yeah, it'd be great to play Michigan State and all this. And he's like, <laughs> and then he's just talking straight talk and like serious to the point talk. And I'm like, God, like this guy just isn't loosening enough. <laughs> and, but it's, it was just his personality. Right. And that's probably why him and Belichick get along so well. Right. I mean, and, and then if that's what the personality is, I'm good with it for that being my coach because they're winning. They know how to win. And, um, but yeah, Nick, um, I remember Nick talking about, you know, we need to put weight on me. Cause I was like, when I was a high school senior, I was like 270, but I was six, six. So I was fairly, Oh, you can see in that picture how thin I was. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about, you know, we'll get the, you know, we'll get you on the, on the weight program at Michigan state, just like everybody else. And, you know, this is something that a lot of people might not know, but I like absolutely love working out. I loved lifting, um, you know, like two of the most influential movies that I've ever watched were Rocky and Pumping Iron. And one came out in like 1976, mm. one came out in 1977, I think. So, you know, I was like, mom and dad, I got to get gray shorts. I mean, gray sweats and gray hoodie. And, and I'm, I'm in Canada running like in a snowstorm, right? And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> so you I'm like, had the rocky step, you had the rocky steps, did you? Right, right, right. I didn't know. <laughs> I like going to a cornfield or something, right? <laughs> so so it's uh you know, it was it was what, what point was I going to with this? Um the lifting and the, the lifting, program. right? So Nick goes, you know, we're gonna have you you know on the weightlifting program and and because I liked lifting so much already, I like was on my own program and this was this was way before steroids before i took any steroids um and that's a that's a very sensitive subject because not many people know about that so <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to get triggered or anything right so so uh <laughs> otis that's knows a, what i'm talking about yeah. so so uh Nick looked at me like, like, cause I was like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, do the workouts that you require and I'm going to do even more. And, and I remember him, like he was kind of walking away. This is in the cafeteria at Kent Roosevelt. And, and he stopped and he looked at me and he's like, you're going to do more. And, and I said, yeah, I said, I'm going to do whatever is required. And then I'm going to do more. And he was like, just do what's required as far as, He's like, trust me, he was like, there's going to be a lot required, as we all know there is. Um, but I still, I would do, I, I, I remember him looking at me very puzzled, like, what do you mean you're going to do more? And I wasn't referring to anything illegal. I was referring to, I'm going to do like two workouts a day uh, when I can, or I'm going to do track work um, that's not required of us, or I'm going to do, you know, whatever I can to improve my athletic ability to become you know, for the end game, the best offense. Really, I was thinking the best football player in the country or best offensive lineman in the country. Mm. But he so, gave me that puzzled look. This is similar to how when I came in, I was uh, <laughs> I was a buck, probably 80, 85, couldn't even put up no weight. Like, it was like, a, <laughs> at, least you, at least you have 270 on, you know, like me. I'm like, <laughs> All right, go ahead, Chichu. No, I was just, you know, so when you when you stepped on campus, you know, stepped in East Lansing, was it, you know, did you fall in love with the campus, you know, at first? And, you know, all the, I know there was the the sensations, the dualies. Oh, the, my gosh. All Man. those. <laughs> Why did you, you have to remind me of that, those two places? Land Shark, Listen, no. if you've been watching our show, Choo Choo will always bring up the uh, watering uh, holes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he was uh, – uh, Ju, what years were you there? Uh, three oh three to oh seven. I wasn't there for dualies and all, but I heard. But were you, you there know. for the best bar ever? 
which silver one? dollar saloon oh yeah that's, yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right right uh, and, silver dollar holla. When I, and when I right silver dollar make you holla so <laughs> Twenty dollar make you holler. So I saw that in a movie, I think. So um, Silver Dollar was like a heavy metal bar, rock and roll bar mm. when I was there. And they turned it into a country bar, right. and then I yeah. think, and then I, and then you know, rumor was that it was going to go back to a like a like a live band, like heavy metal bar. And then next thing I heard is they tore it down, and I was like, you tore it down. WTF. Oh, yeah. like you tore it down. The dollar. Oh, there's a piece of me that died when I heard that. You know? Yes. It was it was it was an awesome place, you know. My sensations days were like like uh they were like my first year there, maybe like going into my second year, and and I can't dance, right? And so I would drink and then go think I could dance and make a fool out of myself. And but sensations, there's some great stories about sensations that cannot be told on this podcast. <laughs> oh. We really we can. can. <laughs> we can the line a little right, bit. Right. There. Yeah. You will get demonetized on YouTube if those stories are told. <laughs> <laughs> I know I uh, I've heard a couple of those stories with you because I had you know uh, Dan Enos he was oh yeah quarterback Danny. coach but then he was my my senior year he was my, my running backs coach so you know Javon and I will sit there yeah. before meetings and just talk about the old days and you know we've just compared like you know his guys versus us yep. now where we yep. and yeah so, so a couple of those stories slipped out a little bit so Danny remembers he remembers <laughs> yeah. and then he remembers all the you know just. Next time you talk to Danny, if he hasn't even shared these stories with you, just ask him about the intensity that we that we trained, how we trained. We trained with, you know, I'm just saying our, our group, mm -hmm. we trained extremely intense and we practiced extremely intensely. And I think we, you know, our kind of, I don't want to say theory, our, the way we approached it was when you cross that white line, even at practice, when you cross that white chalk line, coming out of the football building onto the practice field. As soon as you cross that white line, you be ready to play and practice. You know, you can jack around all you want, stay outside the chalk line. But as soon as you cross that chalk line, when stretch starts, or if you're walking to get ready to get in line for stretch, um, it was business. And I am a firm believer of you do play like you practice. And so every day, I went out and had a game, you know, that, that we practiced and I tried to torture as many people as I could. Yeah. So you, you talk about mm -hmm. that, that fact about, you know, stepping on that intensity there. And I, I remember a few weeks back, we ran the number 79 who wore it best, you know, conversation there and people were commenting. A lot of people were, you know, Tony, <laughs> Jason, uh. Jason, like the reason he wore 79 is because of you. And oh, so, you know, and I remember, um, Dan Eno sent me a text. He was like, uh, you know, hands down, Tony Mandrich, um, you know, that, that guy was the most intense and most physical guy I've ever, you know, encountered. And you just talked about that stepping onto the, you know, between those lines mm -hmm. and you, the, the switch turns. Yeah. Was it um, a cultural thing that the team embodied that once you came to Michigan State, you had to, you know, take on this, you know, type of mentality? Or was that like uh, just individual? I think we had, we had had, uh, <clears throat> we had, had you know, it was kind of like, what are we there for? Like, there's a, a group of us, I mean, you know, players that where we kind of would sit around and be like, okay, why are we, you know, why are we here? Like, we're here to get it, obviously, to get an ed education and to play football, hopefully go to the next level if that's what we want to do. But we want to win, you know, and go to the Rose Bowl at that time, you know, Big Ten champ would play the Pac-10 champ. Um, so, we held each other accountable, which I think is one of the best ways to do it because when you're when your own peers are holding you accountable and and your own peers are holding you accountable, you don't want to let your peers down. I mean, you don't want to let your coach down either, but it's like when your peer or the guy that you're blocking for beside you, um, if you're letting him down, 
you know, it's maybe time to start rethinking why you're there. And so we held each other accountable because we all had the same goal. And, uh, you know, a big part of that, you know, was George. And, and, you know, think about it. Nick was a DB coach. And look at what kind of a great leader Nick is. And he was a DB coach. We had, we had a fantastic coaching staff. Um, and, we had a, and we had a fantastic, we had fantastic recruiting classes. I was the second class there uh, for George. And, you know, in my class was Lorenzo White and Andre Risen. Mm. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, you're talking about two, I mean, two of the best, in my opinion, Seven. that played at that position. I mean, you know, that's, uh, they could recruit and they would go hard and that's what nick does nick recruits hard and you know now with the portal and everything unfortunately with the portal i'll say this you can be great one year and then not so great the next year like in a dramatic shift because of the portal so and i think you know i uh, look i'm just gonna call it out i think we saw that two years ago at state and then last year it was kind of like i was like what's going on here like th this team was like it, and it can't be one guy our running back i mean because when uh when we lost you know when lorenzo left michigan state was still good so you know it's like the portal you lose a lot of people you can get a lot of people quick a lot of juco's and all that stuff so i think i mean it's good for the actual player but for the solidity of a foundation of a program, it's very, it can be very, you know, flashy, like a hot flash one year or two years, and then not so much the next year because you lose players. And unfortunately, you know, that's the negative part, although I'm sure there's a lot of benefits too, you know. Um, you know, Coach, I mean, I've never met Coach Tucker. When Coach Tucker got hired, I was like, who's like, I don't even know anything about this guy. But when when he started talking, I was like, I like this guy's like sounds like George. He's like this guy's smash mouth to the point, simple, and it's like that's a guy I would love to be coached by. And mm. I thought to myself, you know how lucky if those kids that are playing there right now know how lucky they are to have a guy like that. No different than Mark Antonio. I mean that guy. I mean it didn't seem like there was a lot of gray area in his communication. Right? <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Oh, just a gut feeling. Was, right, if there like, was, it was a sense of confusion for us because we was like, I don't know what the heck he meant by what he just said to right. me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, you, you know, we, we that, those are great points. want to get to those after this message from my friends over at IHOP, Tony. Well, yes, <laughs> I hoppy hour starting at six dollars at three p.m. Only from I hop. Download the app and join the rewards program today. All right. So, so Tony, just on that, you, you're talking about a lot of things there. The, the recruiting, how you know the intensity of the recruiting that you remember when you were a player at Michigan mm -hmm. state and what you see today with the transfer portal and all those things, you know, a lot of players now, like there's been a big shift about your brand and marketing, mm -hmm. you know, that's what that name image likeness is about your brand. You know, I know that you've talked about this at nauseum about, you know, steroids and you right. were, you were picked second overall in the NFL draft. And because of your marketing though, you brought a whole new light to offensive line position as a whole. You were, I believe you're the first million dollar offensive line in, in the NFL, NFL history. Correct. In the NFL. Right. So, you know, when you think about that, like, you know, the positives outside uh, to me, you know, outweigh the negatives. Like, do you think about that at all? When you think about, you know, your time at green Bay, let's say that. You know, you know, Green, as, as I've said before, as many of the country has seen, Green Bay was a train wreck for me. But that was, you know, that was me. That was my self-sabotage. Green Bay, like, man, you talk about loyal fans. I mean, there was we, any away game we'd play a third of I would comfortably say a third of the stadium was Packer fans. And, and they were some of them were native to that city. They, they weren't like they didn't fly there. Um, so they were awesome, but my experience in green Bay, I mean, was crucial. 
as epic of a fail as it was, it was crucial in, in the development of me, for me, because as time went on, you know, you know, almost, you know, 56, almost 57 now. So I can look back and I can, I can look back and say, I was a train wreck. I was a second pick. I was a train wreck in Green Bay for four years for the first five, uh, four of the five guys in my draft class are in the Hall of Fame. Um, then I'm out of the league for three years. And because I'm so consumed with, you know, prescription painkillers and opiates and, and drinking and feeling sorry for myself and blaming the media and blaming everybody but me. And, and then I get sober just outside of Detroit and Brighton, Michigan. And, and then about six months of being sober, um, I started working. I mean, I started working out again and started getting strong. And then I get a chance to have a workout with Indianapolis and, and, you know, look, I burned all my bridges. I mean, I was, uh, I don't know what words I can say on here without getting bleeped, but I, I was, uh, not the most eloquently spoken person at the time and had, had done and said a lot of things that were self-sabotaging. Um, so for anybody to even give me a chance or even a look for workout, I was grateful for mm -hmm. Indianapolis gave me that chance and, and, um, gave me a contract and, you know, just cause you get a contract doesn't mean you make the team and you still got to make that 53 man roster. And I was lucky enough to play there and be a starter for two and a half seasons of the three years I was in Indy. So when I left Indy because of my shoulder injury, the transition was like smooth as butter going from the NFL into the real world. So now take it 30 years later, and, and I kind of started reflecting on this even 10, 15 years ago. I started looking back and I started going, I have this experience, personal experience of playing like a train wreck, you know, half in the bag with opiates and with painkillers and, and, you know, just not doing the right things. And then I get this experience of playing in the NFL, crystal clear eyed, you know, clear headed, sober minded. And what a difference it is. You could actually walk up to the line of scrimmage and remember whether it's a run or a pass and what, what it's on, you know? Mm. Um, so like to me, that experience mm. and experiencing both of those, although one was not really that much fun is like priceless. It, it's, it gives me a perspective that I can look back and say, here's how not to do it. Here's the template for how not to do it. And then here's the template for doing it the right way, you know, keeping your mouth shut, doing the right things, you know, doing more than is asked for you. You know, in, in Indianapolis, I was more like I was at Michigan State, minus obviously the steroids. But in Indianapolis, I played and, you know, I didn't, I definitely didn't play at a Pro Bowl level, but I played well enough to be a starter for two and a half years. And, and I got to, you know, within 5% of my strongest ever. Uh, with no steroids. So that's when I want to take a hand and start hitting myself in the head. I so, <laughs> mean, why did you take him in the first place? You know? <laughs> yeah. So, but that, that's a, that's a great point there. And, you know, that leads me to my question there. Cause when you came out of high school, you know, you said, you know, uh, Nick Saban said, you know, we're going to put you on the workouts and you said, I'm going to do double that. And you were talking about extra workouts and everything. At what point, what was the, like the trigger, the reason that you felt like you had to uh, use steroids? It's a great question because there was. Um, so I started my first cycle of steroids, which is, I mean, look, at the, at the end of the day, it's steroids. Although I will say it was a mild cycle. It was my last month of high school. It was like in May before I was graduating high school. And then summer goes and then fall time here at Michigan State. I couldn't get past 315 on the bench, which we all know is three plates on each side. I could do 295 for five, but I couldn't do 315 for one. So it was a mental block. So I ended up, so I took some and within like 10 days, I was like doing doubles and triples with 315. And I was like, okay, this works. Um, so I, here was my thinking. Um, I got coached only one year by really good coaches 
and that's not to disrespect my Canadian coaches, but if I was playing hockey, it would have been to my advantage, but I was playing football. So right. I was getting legitimate good coaching from Kent Roosevelt High School. Then I was getting legitimate great coaching at Michigan State. So I already felt like I was way behind everybody else. I was like trying to catch up, trying to catch up, trying to catch up. And when you have that point of view or that that outlook and on top of that, you want to be the best ever. Um, it's kind of like now I got to even do more work. So so I felt that was one of the avenues to catch me up and, and get me ahead. And, and, and I'll. You know, I'll even give you a, a different example. <clears throat> Five years at Michigan State, first year was redshirted. I never went on a spring break because I would stay there. I would train my butt off both in the weight room and on the track every year. So that gives me almost two weeks. Okay. My buddies, and, I, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't have uh, it's more power to them there's nothing wrong with what they did so most of my buddies on the team would go down to florida or wherever for spring break and party and have a good time and more power to them but i was basically gaining a month there because i was going two weeks ahead they were losing two weeks yeah. now you do that times four or five years you're gaining some time you know you're catching up and you start doing that in the summer um, a lot of, you know, a lot of players stayed, a lot of players left and that's fine. I knew what I needed to do if, for what I wanted to become. Um, and I also had this feeling that, you know, growing up watching the Steelers also in the NFL of the seventies and, you know, steroids were no secret there. Um, and, and I saw how they just bullied people and just pushed people around. And they won four championships in six years, four Super Bowls. And I felt, you know what, that's, that's the road to the, to the big leagues is, mm -hmm. is the steroids. You know, we, and when you get there, you're like, this is nothing like I thought it was. <laughs> uh, you know, it was almost like a letdown. It was, <laughs> it was a letdown. I mean, um, the, I, I definitely enjoy the process of stuff. Even to this day, it doesn't even have you know, it could be with anything. The process of doing it, I enjoy way more than the end game. The end game, I acknowledge and I appreciate and I say, we did it. And I'm like, what's next? What are we doing next? And for me, looking back at football, that was definitely, definitely uh, the, the same situation. It was the process of getting all that preparation and doing it all. So I felt for me to catch up on all that being so far behind, you know, and I was in Canada, you know, born and raised Canadian and, and this and that, like really like the odds were against me. So I was like, okay, well, if the odds are against me, what am I going to do about it? Right. You know, and sitting in pout ain't going to change anything, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not at all. I mean, you, you just described the Mamba mentality that Kobe Bryant, you know, what, would you talk about, you know, gaining a month when you, people are taking those times mm -hmm. off and go to school. Yeah. You, you were doing that well before Kobe was even, you know, thought of, you know, because right. he talked about that a lot about his training. Right. You know, so, yeah, yeah, Tony, when you you look at, I can remember, I'm, I'm a kid from Indianapolis, right? I'm from yeah. Indianapolis. I remember they had some doctors that had, came to our school, our high school, and they uh, had a little conference, and they, you were just had left the combine, apparently. You were in, in Indianapolis for the combine, <laughs> and the doctors put – Put a picture of you up on the screen, right? And I guess in, the, in an effort to try to demotivate us from doing any kind of performance enhancing drug, they're like, this guy right here, we know he's on drugs. And I'm like, but every guy in that gym was like, I want to be that guy. Right. You know, they didn't <laughs> care. <laughs> so, <laughs> All I kept saying was, man, it's creatine. It's creatine, you know, <laughs> it's creatine and amino acids, you know, but, it was, <laughs> amino but yeah, I mean, but you know, like that picture that they showed, which uh, I don't know if it's the same picture that when I had like, my con yeah, that one. And then I don't know if you ever saw the one where like when I had my own combine at the football facility on in East Lansing, so in the tank top, right? Hmm. So, yeah. like, I was off of steroids for, six, you know, four months already. 
because I didn't want to test dirty. Like I, from that point on, I was done. Like I was not taking them anymore. And in the NFL, never nothing. So, you know, it's like we were, um, you know, it goes back to what we, the point we were talking about earlier, the intent, what we expected out of ourselves was very, a very high standard. We expected that out of ourselves and we expected it out of the guy that played beside us and, and, and all that stuff. So, you know, I, I listen, I'll make one thing clear. I condone the use of steroids. Don't use steroids. Don't anybody use steroids. Um, you know, not especially if it's against the rules, but just don't do them. It's not worth it um, because you can get there. You can get there by doing it. It just takes a little, I mean, by doing it the right way, it just takes a little bit longer. And, um, but there's a, also this misconception and of, by people, and that's why I wanted to preface by saying that there's a misconception by of people, including people that are even older than me, that, Oh, well, you played good because you took steroids, you know? And it's like, okay, well, then why didn't everybody play good? <laughs> you know, because there was a lot of guys taking steroids in the Big Ten. And there was a lot of guys taking steroids at that time in the country. And it was like, so, you know, it, and again, I'm not condoning the use of steroids, but it's like you still, as you guys all know, you got to be able to think on the run. You have to be able to listen to calls, you know? And one of my big things was also... If I'm this big and this strong, yeah, unless I can run, it doesn't matter. I unless I'm playing nose guard or, unless, you know, and I just need to clog up both, you know, a gaps or whatever. That's a whole different ball game. But if I need to be pulling and, and, and blocking on an island, you know, it's like you have to be athletic. You have to be able to run. You have to be able to have footwork. You have to be able to do all this. You have to be able to do with, you know, audibles. You have to. And then think about all the things that people don't talk about. You got to not get in trouble off the field. You got to go to class and, you know, there was people before my time that say, you got to go to class, stay eligible. Of course, I didn't take that attitude. I took the attitude of, I want to be a Rhodes Scholar, but <laughs> that's why I graduated last summer or last fall, I should say, <laughs> after a 33 year hiatus, hey, I was working on my doctorate. The full circle. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, right. brother. Yeah. Thank you. And I, and thank you so much to Michigan state because their administration department and their athletic department were absolutely awesome. And, you know, thanks to the trust in the NFL mm -hmm. because all those departments work together to make that happen. And, and I'll, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, but it was, you know, it was, you know, it doesn't just happen. Like if you can't just take steroids and stuff happen. And when I say that, it sounds like I'm saying, well, you know, it's okay to take steroids and it's not, but a lot of people will be like, Oh, the reason he did well, or the reason for this is because of the steroids. Well, there's some truth to that, some truth, but it's like, you know, I already got the scholarship before I took a steroid, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, came back and still played in the NFL and not taking steroids, almost drank myself to death a couple of times and, and, you know, overdosed on painkillers um, but it's, I find that interesting. I talked to at length, um, with, uh, Jeremy Schapp about that, um, who did the E60 50. and he, you know, he's a very bright guy. He's a very bright guy and he gets it. He gets it. And, but it's like, you know what, that's the rap you get. And I'm like, I know what I'm about. I know what I believe in. Um, and I know where I made my mistakes and I tried to correct them. And it's, you know, it's a constant work in progress every day to be better than the version I was yesterday as a, as, a, as a man, you know, as a man and as a person. Yeah. And uh, you, you talked about, you know, seeing the game through two different lenses, you know, the lenses when you were on um, the pills and the, all the alcohol and stuff, and then going, you know, getting your life together and, um, and then coming back and seeing it at a clear headed lens, you know, like you said, walking yeah. to the line and yeah. no one to right. run past, no one to snap <laughs> out. All those things are important, especially if yes. <laughs> but uh now you, you're you're looking at you're looking through another type of lens now with yeah. photography. 
How yes. how did you get involved with you see what I did that play on lenses there? That was very good. Yeah, look, you learned from what? you learned from uh, OG Straight, man. You should you should That's be writing you, you should be writing poet you should be writing poetry. Oh no! Oh no! No! Don't hype him up! Don't hype him up, Tony! Don't hype him up, man! You know I I always uh, you know what the catalyst was. Um, the guy that was doing the guy, the photo uh, photographer that was doing the cover shot um, for SI at that time, it was, you know, 1989. So they were using Polaroids for test shots to see the light and stuff. Cause that was uh, right on Venice beach on the, on the, uh, these huge rocks that were like part of a breaking wall that stopped the water. And he said, you know, we have the light we want. And they had a bunch of modifiers out and diffusers and strobes and, you know, stuff that I couldn't even say those names back then because I didn't know what the heck they were. But I asked him, he he kind of got what he wanted. Then he said, we just need to wait 10 more minutes for the sun to go down a little bit more. So I asked him in the meantime, I said, can I see the Polaroid just to see kind of like what you're capturing? And he showed me and it was like, how do you make that picture look like that? Because outside it's so bright right now. And he, you know, he made like a shadow across the one side. And, and then he, I'm sure he explained it, but... I was more interested in making sure my shoulders looked big and stuff you know, in the picture. Because <laughs> it was like, what about me, so right? Between, right, right. In between, right. right. <laughs> Who told you? Right? But but it was, uh, so that was like really the catalyst. And then, and then, you know, once you're in the NFL, you're consumed with the game. And then not only was I consumed with the game, but I was consumed with myself and all of my, the stuff and all the baggage I brought with it. So that's what piqued the interest. And then it piqued it more, um, you know, after Indianapolis, that's when I started really getting to being more of a serious, serious hobbyist at about 19, I'd say 99. And then um, in like 2005, I made a decision to figure it out and, and, you know, how to monetize and how to make this a business. And so I've been doing that in public speaking and, and at one point, um, even ran, ran a web company for like seven, eight years with my wife at the time. And, um, so, you know, now it's all photography, public speaking and, um, and, you know, whatever else, you know, memorabilia stuff or, you know, autograph stuff shows, you know, there's a plethora of things that I do, but those are like the two main, main two things. Right. So, so I know, look, I, I'm gonna have to bust, bust your chops on like the the short the short option that you selected in that photo shoot was that That's a, a football was, short <laughs> in the cover? Oh, yeah, yeah, you want to start the oh, quads on? Oh um, yeah, you, look, that was before it was in yeah. where people rolling up beyond the the, the knees. I was right? I was listening. I was I was trendsetting. I was trying to say, <laughs> you were. and I had a mullet swag. <laughs> and right, yeah, there's your the swag, right? Had- a mullet that and a pair of socks down the front, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, it was uh, it it was there was like you know it's kind of cheesy to say, but there was a few like wardrobe changes that we did. But it was just like let's try the, you know the football pants, cut off football pants, and let's try like regular like you know basketball shorts or let's try whatever. And then they ended up like I didn't you know. It's not like they asked my opinion, and I was just like, I was just like, you know, you guys are getting in the way of my training time. I need to go train, right? I need to get off my feet, get some rest, and, and so I can have a good workout. So, but it was, um, I mean, it was a great experience. I, I feel, I, I, you know, truly am blessed to be, a, I mean, to be alive from all the, you know, nonsense that I had done that I could have sabotaged myself and almost did a few times to death, but I've lived a great life, you know, and, and I still have so much more to learn. So I don't think I'm going anywhere and I hope I'm not going anywhere yet, but there's so much more and there's so much more to accomplish. And there's so many more things on my plate that I want to do. Um, that'll take, you know, decades to accomplish, but, um, you know, I, I, I feel like I've got to experience a lot of different things in my life and, like the thing we talked about with the different lenses of, you know, playing through, you know, foggy eyes and then playing 
through crystal clear eyes and and then the sobriety experience and the whole Michigan State experience like was you know ranks right up there with the top five ten years of my life um and it, it was just awesome it was and just the whole experience from 11 years old pulling out a piece of paper in Canada and a pencil and writing down what is the plan like what is the goal and then what's the plan how are you going to execute this and you know next time you look at an 11 year old and if some of you have kids that are close to that age that's when I made a decision that I was going to play in the NFL and from that point on, you know, my brother had said, you know, you can't be weightlifting yet because you're still growing. So I was just calisthenics like crazy and playing, you know, organized soccer, tons, like eight years of soccer, running around, changing direction. It's like all that had motive behind it. And it wasn't to win a soccer championship. It was <laughs> it was to become a better athlete, to get myself the best chance at, at getting a, a, an opportunity to play college football. And then luckily, lucky, you know, I was got to go to a great, you know, best school in the country. Yeah, Tony, I've heard you multiple times say, hey, weight lift, hit the track. Like, I feel like people are failing to realize about they're both, the, yeah. They're both yeah. going coincide with getting becoming an elite athlete. And um, I think that's where, you know, nowadays there's a lot of a lot of players, like I guess high school coming up it's like it's chasing the clout to like showcase right. what they're doing right versus like just getting in the gym and just right. not having to be like hey i need to show you what i'm doing versus just do it right, right. so right. um no i appreciate you one i appreciate you being open and honest because i Absolutely. think from a standpoint of yeah. redemption and sharing your story that's where it kind of starts where you're able yeah. to say hey you know i had a problem but now i'm able to at least reach one, teach one, and save one, right, with your story. Yeah. And so, yeah. one, I think is a great opportunity to say, hey, Spartan Dogs, we've brought people on that have every different aspect of life and kind of went through the journey of life. And by you going through and finishing a degree, um, I think that is that is the absolute most yeah. prized joy, in my opinion, right? Because yeah. all in all, you could still be saying hard-headed, like, no, I'm not right. going to finish it. right, right. 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 You know, this was a huge testament to a lot of people yeah. behind the scenes. And this is what we talk about, yeah. finishing it, going full circle, man. So I, I applaud you, man. Like, I, I've you. truly been blessed by your testimony. I mean, I knew, obviously, what you were doing, um, you know, prior to and, you know, start to look at it. But we need you to get back on campus, man, and come. Yes. Like, that's just real and honest, yes. man. Like, we need <laughs> to set it up and schedule it yeah. right now. We, we we can take a That's we can we take do. hey oh we gotta do a, a dinner like a competition or some kind of a sweepstakes to have a dinner with all of us and you, Tony. <laughs> yeah. Somebody can I'm in, back. I'm in gonna come back on a weekly I'm in. game and let's do this. It's not gonna be during yeah. Richmond. It's not gonna be during Richmond week. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. It's not. I hope I'm not you know setting up <laughs> cook check or nothing, but I hope not. Let, let me just oh, say man. let me let me just say George said we're not playing teams like that. <laughs> He's like, so my last two years, we played like Florida State, you know, and then I think the year I left, they played Miami Hurricanes. Um, we did play Rutgers, although they were in the Big Ten, but they beat us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was one year Central Michigan. But it's like, you know, his attitude and our attitude, this is where I think it came down from, was how do you get better? You get better by playing people that are really good. You don't get right. better mm -hmm. by playing against Richmond. Now, that's not a diss on Richmond at all. You know, you don't get better right. by playing Chattanooga a and Tech, a and this and that, right? It's like, no, let's play the Hurricanes. Let's play the Seminoles. Let's play USC. Let's play all these teams that will challenge us. And if we do lose, we've lost to a team that is like tier one athletes. And what can we do to prep for the Big Ten? Because, you know, the way at least it was when I played the first three games where you're out of conference games, and one of them always used to be Notre Dame. So, yeah, like, yeah, I think still. one year was USC, Notre Dame, Florida State. And then we'd start the Big Ten. So, like, we're playing, we're playing three of the top ten teams in the country already, and now we're going into the Big Ten. So that gets you, in, you know, in my opinion, that gets you better. And yes. I understand that there's business decisions with playing Richmond, and, and it helps the school, and I think that that's great. But I want to play against good competition because I want to get better. And I'm not saying, again, that's not a diss on Richmond. And I'm not 
saying that they don't have great athletes. <laughs> Look at Jay, you laughing at me. He's like, I, he's, he's like, he's like, you already stuck your foot in your mouth. You're done. <laughs> Just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I think but some good news on point, that right? with the new conference alignment, you know, with yeah. USC and UCLA. Right, coming in, so they have some. Oh, that's, I think that's fantastic. It's uh, I kind of chuckled when I saw that because I was like, they're West Coast. Like, can you imagine? Like, they have to fly all the way to sometimes to the East Coast to play. You know, some of these teams in the Big Ten, and it's um, that's a that's a it'll make it for interesting football. And um, but I, I do miss. I'll tell you what. There's some traditional things I miss, like Big Ten versus Pac Ten in the Rose Bowl period. Mm-hmm. Like there was, you know over 50, 60, 70 years of tradition of that. And then it got changed. And it's like, I, I I like the college football playoff. I think there should be maybe four more teams in it. You know, they don't seem to be calling me to ask me my opinion. So I don't usually give it, (laughs) but, but I will say, (laughs) but I will say the Rose Bowl should have been left for the big 10 versus Pac-10. And again, that's just my personal opinion. And I think it's just from a tradition thing and all the history that's behind that and the granddaddy of them all and all that stuff. Now I don't know like the sugar bowl and this bowl and the blue bonnet bowl. And you know, it's like pop tart bowl and chick, chick fil a bowl. It's like, I see your guys. I hop at and I want pancakes. I talk chick fil a, I want the chicken sandwich, you know? So uh, so Tony, before we let you that, go, we do need one more. Yeah, go ahead. We, we need one yeah, more. Before we let you go, Tony, I know you talked about you know your dream was playing you know playing in the Rose Bowl there and everything. So w- what great memory you know what what's a good memory, funny memory you know that you took away from that Rose Bowl? Man. I gotta, be, gotta be careful here. No, it's, it's all good. It's a safe space. Go ahead. It's a safe space. I don't ever want to be in a safe space. Um, <laughs> it's a different. I'm just a different generation, I guess. But um, you know, it's like it was cool to go to, I guess, Disneyland because you know I'd never been there. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, uh, like Laurie's Steakhouse was pretty good. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was, uh, again, for me, believe it or not, beating Indiana for the Big Ten championship in East Lansing was five times more exciting and satisfying than beating USC in the Rose Bowl. Mm. Mm. And that, you know, and that's just, that's just the way I feel. Um, you know, finally, it was like when we won the Big Ten to go to the Rose Bowl, it was like, 25 years they hadn't gone uh or or like 24 years since they had gone the last time and it was like or 20 years it was a long time and and i thought Mm -hmm. wow there's been a lot of great teams between that rose bowl team and to our team there was a lot of great michigan state teams and you know we were the ones that were had the opportunity and we put it together and and with you know with a lot of work from everybody from everybody in the football building to the guys playing on the field to the fans to everybody. So to Bob Knickerbocker, you know, oh, man. Like, oh, wow. have, hey, have you oh. ever seen, have you ever seen anybody cheaper with gloves <laughs> yes. in your life? Oh my God. And generational and, to generation. It what happened to the gloves I got you in 82. <laughs> what? Right. Oh, I'm like, man, that's pra- oh my that's one crazy. practice Listen. and my gloves are ripped up. Right. And I'm like, Bob, I need another. He's like, Jeez, he's like yelling, and I'm like, Bob, <laughs> chill, man, dude. One of the greatest guys, one Absolutely. of the greatest guys. And I, so, Tony, never. Dude, you bring up Bob, uh, Mr. Nick, man. So, uh, we're, we're apparently Nick next Thursday. We're gonna I'm, we're gonna hang out with him uh, because Please he's still in town, him. and he, right. he he legit said that all he wants to do is just hang around the guys and just listen about the war stories and the glory days. Yep. You know, as he's aging, but like. Yep. Mr. Nick, everybody, that's the common thread of like, you got to show holes in your socks and your underwear, your girdles just to get new, fresh pairs. <laughs> like, lay off my boy. With right? Me. right? <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was the best. He, he was. was man. I, yeah. I, when I, I went back to state in 15 or 16 for just in the, it was in the right around Christmas time. So the guys were off ready. And Knickerbocker was at the building. I'm pounding on the door. He's the only guy in the building. And he's like shocked to see me. And I'm like, Bob, I said, I need some gloves. He started laughing, right? 
and and we sat and, and 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 he gave me a bunch of swag and and he was awesome man he was he was like one of those guys that you know it's like a behind the scenes guy but talk about how crucial like his what he did was right and bob was just one of those guys that i just loved to death and it's it's a guy that you'll never forget we had a great like probably two hour conversation that day just me and him in the equipment room and and we talked about stuff the one thing that he said that really surprised me because i had asked him about the recruits and stuff and he and i and he said he said something you know that's not going to get him fired and i think but he said something that really kind of caught me off guard because i was like like i was like you're kidding me he said like one of the most com like one of the most important things for these guys coming out of high school is that they ask the equipment guy is how many different uniforms do we wear this year? <laughs> and I was like, Bob, you, you're, mm -hmm. I know you're joking with me. I know you're joking with me. Cause if you were to say that to Nick Saban, he would knock you in the head. Yeah, I know. You like, or, or never George see a Wright. different uniform from Alabama. Just... I think I think Nick said something sometime. Like he said, some recruit asked him, you know, what uniform. He's like, yeah, well, for home games we wear our crimson ones, and for road games we wear our white ones, <laughs> like we have for a hundred years, right? Yeah. So, so it's exactly. it's, uh, it's very interesting. I, and and you know, and then Oregon, you know, already Oregon, and you know, for decades now has been using different uniforms and helmets and part of that's because nike sponsored and all that but but i found that very interesting that that was a high 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 priority to the kids coming to the schools visiting the schools and i just found it interesting yeah that's the new new age <laughs> now this yeah. recruiting now i feel old <laughs> man i feel so, like i'm gonna keep you on but like i, I gotta <laughs> ask because i think we always hold we hold the 65 national championship team near and dear to our hearts and obviously with you all going to the Rose Bowl like I feel like there was like obviously this generation gap and then when we yeah. went to the Rose Bowl 2014 yeah. yep. they were showing you all on like this is how y'all went over there and got it done yep. you know talk about like you know I grew up loving and watching Andre Rice I'm from Flint right right so, right you know you had Andre Rice you had Lorenzo you had the main state Carla Barnett who was our co my coach mm. you know talk about that whole team because there's a lot of strong personalities oh man on that HB squad, but... was no joke man and I'm <laughs> yeah. trying, you know I mean Percy Snow uh yeah. you know Dre Andre took me to Flint once and I was like don't ever take me to Flint again <laughs> <laughs> I think he was setting me up. I, I said, I said you're, taking, you're taking a big white guy in, into, into Flint, Michigan. I said, I'm from, man, I'm from Canada. I'm like, why? Like, people are asking, why is he saying, hey, man, we play, we play, like, can, we, we have a commission hey, games, man. We play really? Canada. Yeah. Right? So it was, uh, no, but on, I mean, Andre, you know, one of the best athletes I've ever seen um, on the field, best athlete I've ever seen play the game is Dion Sanders, mm. both in college when he, when we played against them and then in the pros, um, that guy like glided across the field. Um, and, and look what he's doing now. You know, I have so much respect for what he's doing now at Colorado and, um, I'm a huge Dion fan, you know, and HB actually, when I went back to visit or maybe for that 25th year reunion or whatever it was when, from when we had won it, I think HB was coaching. Um, I don't know if he's still coaching with state, yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, is yeah. he? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, he had a, and he had a good, he played for the Patriots, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, we always joke with him because he got, he got caught on Barry Sanders. Highlight. Oh, remember that? I hope, <laughs> hey, listen, I hope he doesn't blame me for that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he basically we, we brought it up and we was trying to joke with him. He was like, Y'all tell me what y'all would do when Barry Sanders coming yeah. in. You. you know, and, and Barry was like crazy good. I mean, and and, oh, God. and 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 you know, so think about it. I mean, I got to watch Barry twice a year because we were in the same division. And you know, and I still say Dion was the best, but like like to me, like Barry was like I mean, I mean, he's in that discussion. He he made he did stuff where like our offensive line, you know how the offensive line sits down when we're on the sideline to go yeah. over the stuff. The fact we used to get a fax machine down of the, of, the, of the readout. We don't have these fancy tablets and stuff. So we would we would go up to the sideline just to watch Barry. 
when we were playing mm. for Green Bay because he was so exciting to watch. And um, yeah, and the, and I love the fact that every time he scored a touchdown, he just gives the ref the ball. Yeah. And he was like, this is what I get paid to do, mm. you know? And um, so much respect for that guy. And, um, and you know, it, it was it, our guys, you know, were special. I, you know, um, Dre, Mar- I played even with Mark Ingram when I was at Michigan State. You know, it was a, they had Ingram on one side and Andre on the other. Man. You know, I mean, we, we had some good teams. We had some really good teams and some great guys. You know, I, I would have to say 99% of my experiences with teammates over those five years at Michigan State, they were great guys. Because I think they also recruited on, on you know, George and the crew. They did recruit on character also in response. But that doesn't mean we were all choir boys. Choir boys. <laughs> thank you. I was looking for the right description, but um, no, we weren't choir boys, but man, we had some great players. Um, Tony, I know we got to let you go, yep. but one last question. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. A good story about, you know, beating on those guys down the road, that school down the road. When we, when we the year we won the Big Ten, they played at East Lansing and um, you know, I, I just wanted to, I told the guy I was playing against, and I'm not going to say his name because I don't want to cause any controversy. I've had enough, Evans? I, I don't know his name. I don't know. It wasn't this guy. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Trying to, um, trying to bait you on that one. He's trying, <laughs> yeah, he's trying to be in the key word, uh, key phrase. But there was a guy I told him, I said, I said, I said you're going to, I'm going to torture you today. I, I just told him. And I said it like very calmly and because I was, that was, I was going to make him hurt that and not to go out and hurt him, but I wanted to break his will. Right. And I wanted him to quit. Mm. And this guy didn't quit. He had a lot of fight in him, but you know, you're talking, you know, Michigan's big time football too. Yeah. You know, the little brother, they their little brother, mm-hmm. their little sister. That's right. <laughs> They've been getting their butts handed to them <laughs> the last 10 years. You know, so, but, you know, again, that being said, I have some exception because Jim Harbaugh, I, you know, we played against Jim Harbaugh when he played at Michigan, but then I blocked for him at, in Indianapolis for a year before Peyton came in. So oh, Jim, yeah. Jim was, you know, he was one of the first guys in Indy to come up to me in the locker room and welcome me to the Colts. And, and he was a superstar NFL quarterback already. And, and, you know, I had come out of the blue now, like from being out of the league for three years. And here's a guy that went to the rival school and I'm thinking, you know, like, what's he going to say? Or is he going to tease me or just have like a fun rivalry? The guy was fantastic. Great human being. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people make fun about his pants that he wears or a Sharpie that he wears. Uh, I'm just like, you know what? The guy gets, gets the stuff done. And uh, it's, uh, so I have a lot of respect for that institution. Not as much as the other eight, but well, there's more than eight now because it's a big 16, <laughs> but um, it's uh yeah, I didn't like I didn't like it when that guy called uh, MSU that phrase um, that man, running that's back. best friend, man. So we gotta. That is not my friend. <laughs> and we were, we were yeah, in, that's it. That's that's buddy. Yeah, uh, like. <laughs> let me tell you something. Yeah, I, I well, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna be a surprise. Yeah. Well, look, Tony, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta book, we gotta book you. Like, we gotta get you locked and loaded. Which game? I mean, you got four home games in the month of September. Obviously, homecoming Maryland at the end of the month. Let us know. We got to be. Get you. It's got to be a team. You. It's got to yeah. be oh, an, an OG Big Ten. It's got to okay. be an OG Big Ten team. We, okay, well, it the Michigan's at home. Michigan's at home, so October. That's our only home game. Let's go. Let's get it. Tony, we got to have you back, man. We, we got to have, have you back. You. What is it? October what? October uh, third. Third, yeah, third week. Right. Third weekend. October twentieth. Right. That's October twentieth. I'm gonna, I'm like we gonna, should know we got it on the clock, but you know we just say it's that third weekend. Right, we, yeah. that'll be a great game. <laughs> uh, uh, count me in. Definitely, I'll be done. Uh, hey, that. y'all heard yeah. that? Y'all heard that? Everybody <laughs> hear that? Yeah. October twenty first. October. You know what today is? Now. Is the seventy nine days until college football starts? That's City a great, a great number. The best guy hey, ever. Hey, look, no, 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 no. Listen, Jason wore it. He, he represented. Absolutely. He represented well. I'll tell, I see everyone saying that. Everyone got you locked in, Tony. Uh, October 21st. Uh, it got you locked in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, 
Tony, we're going to get you a credential, October bring your 21st. camera so you can take photo shit. Like you can do well, everything awesome. under the sun. Yeah, we got you. Awesome. Yeah. We're going to do it all. You sure that they're we'll going to let all. me on campus? <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Look, look it's, open door. Hey, it's an open door, man. They open can't door wait. Can't they wait. can't wait to see you. I'd love to. Oh, love, man. Are you kidding me? I'd love to. Oh, man. It's so, yeah. Tony, we're yeah, celebrating. We got to have you back on the show, too. Yeah. Wow. We're celebrating yeah. 100 years of Spartan Stadium. Wow. And we're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the Rose Bowl, that team um, that won it. So, awesome. there's a lot of commemorative celebrations. Yeah. So, you got to be back. Today. You got to come back because your history, your history, man. You're with us, man. You're a Spartan great. So, I appreciate it. Let us know what you need. And we'll get okay. it locked and loaded, man, for sure. All right. I really appreciate it, guys. It was this was great. This was great to share some uh felt like the good old day, you know, being back in the locker room. Nothing like you can't you can't simulate camaraderie, you know. Exactly. And Absolutely. And you just can't yeah. simulate it. And I've been trying to simulate it since I left Indianapolis, and you just can't do it. You know, yeah, there's that's just right. nothing like it. There's a, that's right. I know what you've been through. You know what I've been through. You know, exactly. we, it's like we, we fight, we sweat, we bleed, we, you know, ups and downs every day and, you know, going to Silver Dollar Saloon and everything, <laughs> everything involved, right? So it's like. Briggs, you know, Shark, Man, Shark, Arbor, all of them. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, church, people go to church right, too, you right, know? Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Was it the Silver Dollar things. Church? <laughs> yeah, if you, if you went Saturday <laughs> night, you, Silver you, Dollar Tabernacle. At midnight, <laughs> right. you, know, you got your little communion. Yeah, all right. At midnight. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, we appreciate it. We'd love pleasure. to have you back, thank and we're going to do this that October 21st. We're going to do it. Tony, thank sure. you so much, brother. Love thank you, guys. Appreciate all it. All right. Spartans for life. Definitely. Go green. All right. Thanks, guys. Tony Mandridge. Guys, I mean, that was outstanding. I mean, an, an incredible interview, guys. We'll, let's, let's, let's talk about that after this message from our friends over at IHOP. At IHOP, we're introducing two new all-natural Black Angus steak burgers, the bourbon bacon jam and the jalapeno kick with a crunchy four-cheese crisp. Get a combo with fries and a drink starting at $9, only from IHOP. Bundle offer for a limited time only. Price and participation may vary. Restrictions apply. Hey, fellas. Great job today. I mean, that that was incredible, right? Yeah, and, you know, one thing that, that Tony said, and that's exactly what we, you know, we sat down and thought what we want for this show is exactly what he said. He said he felt like he was sitting in the locker room having a conversation, that camaraderie. That's exactly what the three of us were going for when we pitched the idea of this show and everything like that. So I, I, I'm, you know... Excited, you're happy. Hey, you, you smile like you're a clown now. You're like, <laughs> hey man, you're giddy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not a fan of that red shirt. Man. You like, say what? Like, that. Like, like, I'm telling you, not a fan of many players like I was a fan of him, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, and that drove me to choose a number. I mean, that guy, I mean, and and how cool was he? Great oh. sense of humor, very open. I mean, that that was incredible. Great job, guys, and, and and even a better job by him. Uh, I, guys, well, look, and, and Otis is trying to book him right now. Like, hey, hey, you go, oh. hey, get on the computer. Let's get them fighting oh. right right now. Let's go, man. <laughs> you know, cause, I mean, we think about this, and I know we I know we're running long, but it's just quality content where we we're talking. This is flowing, right? It's almost like a preacher saying, "I'm gonna close." 30 minutes ago, and you're still going, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the spirit's moving. Spirit's moving, right? But Southern Baptist preacher. We, yeah, but we talk, about, we talk about our former dogs that feel like that they leave and they aren't as much as a success that they think they should have been, and they feel like some type of way they won't come back. Like, we have teammates who would not come back, and I just wanted to – you know, say, hey, man, it's an open door, man. Like, we are ready and willing to bring you back and let's, let's enjoy each other like we, we used to when you were here. And so that's why I was saying, like, man, book, come, man, because you get here, they say get here, everything's taken care of, right? And so mm -hmm. um, I just say that to anybody who's watching, any dog, any Spartan, any former student athlete, period. Like, come back to campus, man, and, like, you'll see the, the projections of, like, the progress the campus looks like. But just being able to be around a game and just – tailgating and just having fun, man. It's like, there's no need to, for you to feel ashamed that you didn't do as much as what you thought you would have done after your playing here. So that's why I was saying book now. So we're going to have a big grand scheme, like party, man, when it comes to right. you know, beating down those Wolverines. So. Exactly. 
Also, I'm gonna touch base on that shirt you got on, man. That color, man. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't Ooh. know, brother. <laughs> look, look at the shirt. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Like, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, know, was saying, I don't know. You got that color on. Like, you out like here bulldogging all the way, dog. No. I, I, <laughs> <I'm>, uh, <sighs> I know we got to wrap up. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you, did, did you want me to wear my Spartan green? Absolutely. Yes. You know, absolutely. Right. Yes. You know, I, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. You know, yes. I, I told I, everybody, all of them, they, they know what the time it is. Man, everybody look, knows the time. I'll rip your shirt up with that Spartan tattoo on your chest or something. I don't know. <laughs> look, see? <There> it is. <laughs> I, I can't get rid of it. Yeah, so I, need I you can't cut get your rid sleeve, of this. Cut your sleeves off so you can walk around. Like walking around the building sleeveless. When I was doing my workouts today, that's what I... <laughs> No man, mm -hmm. hey, you're right. Like, like, in in the in the live chat, there was a lot of suggestions on who people want to have on the show. Great suggestions too. So you know, we're gonna don't think that we're not seeing that. Just want you people to know that that doesn't go unnoticed. We see you, and we're working on those guys. Those same guys you're talking Line about right up, there. Man. Um, some of Tony's teammates, by the way, yep. and some of your teammates, and some of mine, and some some other guys. A lot of lot of lot of guys. So, so we're gonna have all those dogs on this show. Because again, this is the only show about Spartan dogs by real Spartan dogs. So, to that point, guys, great show today for Otis Wiley, Ju Culpert. I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta MSU. Have a good night. God bless you. And go green. Go white. This is Sparta MSU as a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. On location technical support is provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our hosts, Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Kulkrick, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support, and as always, go green.